Um, okay, so what we're doing today, we've, the teams have been working heavily even into late last night throwing fixes in. So we're really at a point to give a full status update as to what we were able to accomplish and not accomplish that we're still doing a little bit of testing, but we'll do that next week. But today was kind of just a way to show here's the code that we've been able to produce so far as of today. I'm showing you the dev build. So this is the stage into what's currently working right now. Also, um, my PO partner on the West Coast, Steve, is in transit, so he's not here today, but I'm going to be doing the, showing both the East Coast teamwork and the West Coast teamwork together. Um, Cassie, I think, is on the call. So Cassie, if I miss something that you wanted to illuminate uh, that the West Coast team had worked on as I go through some of the pages, just feel free to jump in. Okay, sure. Thank you. Cool. Um, and as I go through, um, feel free to stop me at any point if you want to ask a question or have a comment. That's fine. I don't mind. And I'll try to be kind of quick to try to keep to 25 minutes or so on the agenda, but Mike, if you can just throw candy out there or something. As I <laughs> um, so to start with, I'm going to take us to our enrollment kind of landing page. We're just like keeping all the links right now. I'm going to kind of take it through more of a, a kind of functional user life cycle to kind of demonstrate things. So what we're going to do is start with um, the rollover feature. I'm talking to functional counsel, so I'm not going to have to explain what a rollover is, which is not. So I'm just going to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is to start our term, form a rollover. So what this screen allows me to do is identify what's the term that I'm actually going to build, my target term, and it allows me to identify the term from which I'm going to roll over, so my source term. So let's say I'm going to play a little bit here. So these are um, UW code that I'm using right here. So that, that we get uh, that's 2012, 2010. So is that spring? But you don't have this. So I can go and get that term. And if I get the source term. So this is an error, a validation error that we wanted to have happen. So what this is doing is making sure that I haven't picked a target term that's preceding my source term. Just use little validation to make sure the user doesn't kind of uh, perform the wrong behavior. The other thing that we can do is let's do a target term of So what this is doing is I pick a different term. One of the requirements of rollover that we're given is you have to roll over from like term to like term. So you roll over from fall to fall, spring to spring. You can't roll over a spring to a fall or summer to a fall. Um, so what this has done is warned us that ah, we picked two different types of terms and it won't let us do that rollover. So that's just to demonstrate some of the validation that exists. But to do it, I'm going to do it for the. Let's just go out. They're here, 2045. Another thing I'll point out about the application is um, we had a lot of discussions with POs about how one picks a term. And you can notice here what I'm doing. I'm not searching and finding terms. I'm entering a term and getting that term. And this is a big distinction we made in this milestone in the recognition that registrars don't look for things like terms. They know the term code. They want to just go enter it and get that information. They don't want to see another page show up with a list of all the terms that might equal what they enter. And go find that term or return that term to your page. So these are really designed thinking about a central administrator and how a registrar works. So now that I've done that, let's roll over some course offering. So once I do that, what it now does is takes me to a rollover details page. It's the second kind of page that you can come to at any time, and it gives all of the details about a rollover. Um, what this is telling me is that that rollover is in progress and tells me some information about it. This is an asynchronous screen style. We originally had it designed as a synchronous one, thinking you know how fun we had with the um, reg appointment one, where you generate thousands and thousands and thousands of things in a couple seconds. This one we learned is taking a little bit longer, a little bit more complicated. Um, so we moved to an asynchronous style. So what it's now doing is in the background, it's chugging along. So if I refresh this page, okay, 34 seconds in, still chugging along. 
It'll probably take, I think it's probably about two to three minutes to finish. But when it's done, what it'll do is show you a lot more information. So what I'm going to do is just jump to, like a cooking show. I'm going to jump to one that's already done, save us some time. Okay, so here's one I ran a little bit earlier today. And for this one, what it's done is it's finished. It now has a status of finished as opposed to in progress. It could also have a status of aborted or failed if there was some huge problem that occurred with it. It tells me kind of the state of where I am. In this case, in rollover, we're in that state where it's not released to departments yet. Departments can't see it, touch it, play with it. This is the time when the registrar is doing its quality check to make sure everything looks right, make any switches it needs to make before it sends it out. This is going to tell me the source term, some date information about when it ran, how long it took. And what it also does, it tells me how many course offerings transitioned, and it tells me how many activity offerings transitioned. Obviously, the sample set is small. Um, it also tells me any exceptions. So an exception would be examples of, this is a simple rollover, not the complex rollover. So in simple rollover, we don't allow you to transition, say, a course that's gone through a clue version change since the term's passed. So it's now at a different clue version. So it's blocking this chem 591 you can see below because it now has a version change. And that list can get as long as you want it to be huge at the end. But this allows you to see any course that didn't roll over and why it didn't roll over. Obviously, the reason it needs a little work still, that's the code. We still have a pretty lipstick translation of that. But what you see here is the future, what's happening in um, an epic we didn't tackle this milestone, which was the complex rollover. And that's the one where you can kind of set different conditions about how you want things to roll over. But we didn't work on that one. So then once you've looked at this and perhaps any other work you've done as a registrar to make sure your rollover has completed as you'd wanted to, you have made any changes you wanted, you can then go ahead and release the department. What this does is it sets the state of the environment to one in which departments can now view and start editing their course offerings. And there we go. So it changes here to say, you know, they've been released. And this information stays. So the reason we wanted this to stay is because we know as a registrar you're often looking to compare. So if you're looking at part of your QA of rolling a return, you might go look at some other spring terms. You can type other terms in here, pull them up, and it will show all the information about those rollovers as far back as you have it. So you can do any of your comparisons to it. And that completes the rollover portion. Any questions or thoughts before I move on to the next? All right. Uh, hello. Um, yeah. I, I'm not exactly sure. Um, how will the user know that it's a spring rollover? Um, it's just perhaps that um, we don't use in South Africa the spring, summer, fall. Perhaps that I don't understand correctly. Uh, but how will they know that the, that term that you put in there, that it's a spring, you said something about the type of the, of the term, that you can't roll over from, a, say, from a fall to a spring, to a summer or vice versa, uh, that you need to roll over from the same type, if I understand it correctly. Correct. We're right now rolling over same type, same type, same type. And the, yeah. and, but and how, will I, how will I know it's a spring type? Because it's not standing there on the screen. How will I know that that code that you put in there is a spring type and not a fall type? So there's different ways to address that. Um, the POs push pretty strong if we're not needing to see it, because from a registrar perspective, the uh, assumption was we know our code. But it's configurable. Um, so we're pulling right out of ACAL. And the fields we're displaying are also pulled out of fields in ACAL. So very easily, we chose that one term ID to display, and we went back and forth. The other option that we almost put on there was a more robust description of the term. So when you hit go, and it presented you the information to the right side of the screen, we could have used a different field to show there, which would have said the entire term information. So it would have said spring, the year, and all the other information that might help somebody who mm -hmm. maybe isn't um, in touch with the coding. Okay. 15 minutes left? Okay, I should go faster. I will talk less, click more. 
All right, so let's move on. We've got a rollover done, so let's look at managed cortisol offering. So this screen was designed as a way for us to view, look, and start interacting with the course offerings that we've created. So what I can do is identify a term, and there's two ways that I can interact. I can either identify a subject code, which, for instance, I might do chemistry, um, or I could pull an actual course offering, which we refer to, we call it the course offering code, um, which would show me one single course offering with all of this activity. In this case, I'm going to start with a subject code. Again, these are gets, not searches. I have to know the information to put it in there. And this will show me all of my chemistry course, course offerings for that particular term. Um, there's still some lipstick work we have on this, but the general functionality is in um, it allows us to see the code, a title of that course offering, the credits of that course offering. Uh, that's a six. That's a variable credit offering. I don't know if we have a multiple. Yeah, multiple be like a two and a four. Um, it'll show us the grading um, option for that course. This is letter. We have a satisfactory. These blanks are just reference data issues that we have to resolve. And then it has the different actions that I can do in response to that course offering. So what I can do when I'm looking at this is if I click on the course offering code, that provides me a view. So if I want to view the information of that course offering, this allows me to do that in a pop-up white box that came in the box with KRED. Obviously, there's some work to do about adding more content to it, but the general functionality is there. Of course, there's a backlog here for that. So the other thing that I can do is I could manage that course offering which if I do that, this takes me into a deeper view of Chemistry 142 and shows me all of the activities that are associated with that particular course offering. If I go back to list all, I'll go back up to where I was before. Previous and next aren't functioning at the moment. But if I wanted to interact with the AO the activity offerings, I could have done that there. So as I get back to here, I could have viewed. I can, well, there's a button for delete, but we're not delivering delete yet. And we can edit that video. So let's go into edit. This is editing the course offering. So as you remember, the course offering is the big idea. And then from that, I can then build activities onto that course offering. The course offering is built in the blue to the rollover. So they get into here to give me some information about the course that I'm working with. Here it'll tell me the aspects of the code. The code's actually a combination of Chem 142, and optionally I can have a suffix. The suffix, what this allows me to do is have multiple course offerings of a single clue in a term. That's what it's used for. Grading options. If the course had multiple grading options available on the clue, it'll allow me to pick one. Um, the constraint here is that you can only have one grading option on a course. Student registration options, so things like audit, um, student chosen, transcripted, pass, fail kinds of things. Things aren't about how the instructor is assessing, but it's how the student is choosing to exercise certain policies about their grading. Those are there. Um, you can have none, or you can have all of them that's not constrained the same way. In this case, I can't change the credit. It's six five from the clue, but I'll show you an example of one that's a little bit different. Here's an example of one that was variable as the clue. So it's variable one to six. So as the clue, if you're variable, what you can do down the course offering is you have lots of options. I can offer it variable one to six, just like it was the clue, or I can constrain that flexibility at the course offering. If I wanted to, I could fix it down to maybe, I want to say it's going to be a three, this course offering term. Um, I could also do multiple. So within that one to six range, maybe I'm just going to offer a a three credit version and a six credit version. Um, so I can make those kinds of adjustments with the relationship to the clue, and this all validates back to the clue. Back to my original. Uh, we have final exam. On this one, we have no final exam or assessment, but I could change that to a standard final exam if I like to say it's going to be offering a final exam. And what you notice is it is making changes to the format widget, which I'll talk about in a second. 
So the format widget, what this allows me to do is identify the possible format the Clue has that I'm choosing to use in this course offering term. In this case, it's, I believe this one only has one course offering, so I can't actually choose any other. There's already the one course offering applied. But if, for instance, this was one of the Clue that said it had a lecture quiz format and also had a lecture format, those would be selectable, and I could, if I wanted to, add another format which said lecture, which I could then go build activity offerings from them. Over here is where I can indicate how the roster, is we're going to use later for roster, is it a course, full course roster, meaning all the activities are consumed in the one gargantuan roster list, or is it done by activity? So you pull up a particular lecture and you get the roster for that. It allows you to manage it that way. And of course you can manage how final exams are going to be handled. And you're going to associate it with as far as organizations for final exam and scheduling. You're going to organize it by the lecture activity or by a quiz activity in terms of some of the standard scheduling algorithms we use. But what you're noticing, if I move this from standard final exam to no final exam, it goes ahead and updates that for you so you know. Here's where I can indicate some waitlist information about my course offering. That kind of indicate how my activities are going to work. Um, it's just some initial information. We obviously haven't delivered waitlist yet. That's not scheduled to happen until a future milestone, but it's just some starting information for that. There's a personnel aspect to course offering. So this is different than instructor. I mean, that's activities. Activities, you put instructors on those. For this purpose, what this allows you to do is, for instance, perhaps you have maybe your, um, your writing course, you have 50 sections all taught by grad assistants, and you actually have a faculty member who manages those people. So the instructor really manage all those grad assistants, and you like to put that in there for different kinds of accounting purposes. You can add a person in here with some kind of role like that at the course offering layer. So what we wanted here was to have more of a get function. So you can actually type in the person's ID number, which is how a lot of scheduling offers work, or you can type in a name and go get that. Um, KRAD doesn't allow for that at this point in time, so we couldn't deliver that. But we've noted that as an improvement we'd like to get. But I can find and return it. So, my affiliation, regular teaching system. I'll occupy a different affiliation for course offering. And we also have the administering org. So this is the organization that has um, authority and assistance to make changes to this. So if you've got, uh, so say if it's chemistry course, I also wanted to give another department access to work with this one because it was part of a relationship I had. I could add another organization to this course. And they would now have, right, five minutes left. So I'm not even going to show you that. <laughs> All right, so I submitted that, um, and we run into another KRAD limitation, which has been filed and documented. Um, this is now showing me a read-only version of the page I worked on, which is not the page flow that we had wanted. What we wanted to go back to the screen we were working in when we selected this course and started interacting with it. Um, it's been documented. We know this is just a bad page flow thing that will get fixed in later KRAD. So let me get in and show. Actually, what I'm going to do is show how to create a CO. Okay. So in this case, um, this allows me, I may have done my rollover already, but I have another course that wasn't part of the last semester. I just know I need to add it. So this semester, uh, we we'll use our term we were just working with, and I'm going to pick what I just entered was the clue code, which is catalog course code, to find the clue that I want to build into my course offering. There we go. So this is giving the information about the clue that I've identified. And here it's telling you what its um, course offering code will be created from, which will use this NURSE 599. And if I choose to, I could add a suffix. What I can then do is add a format. In this particular one, there are two possible formats on the clue that I can deliver this through. I can do this as a seminar or an independent study. Well, I'm going to do a seminar. And I want the roster level at the seminar, 
and final exam seminar. So I can add that format. If I wanted to make both, maybe I wanted to offer some of my activities in independent study and some I wanted to offer through a seminar, I could say add a second act format. I can do independent study and add that one, but I'm not going to worry about that now. Um, below here, you can't see information now, but what this would do is if I had any NURSE 599 crude course offerings existing in this term, it would display them all there. Um, this would be in the case maybe I missed it and it's going to tell me, hey, you're trying to create something you already have. Or secondly, if you're using different kinds of course offerings of that clue, it'll show you perhaps the three other suffix course offerings you have of that course so you understand what you're doing. So that's complete. Again, it's not taking it to the screen you want to go to, but you know. Um, we did not deliver um, during this period the create some term offering, but that was another piece of functionality that we'll be working on later. So let's go and look at that nursing port. So I'm going to, instead of doing the subject code, I'm going to look directly for this course code. I know the course symbol. Cool. So it pulls me my course offering, and you can see it's completely activity naked. So we need to add some activity offerings here. So I'm going to say add seminar. The format type I'm picking is the seminar format type, seminar only. So obviously activity I'm picking is seminar. And let's say we'll build 10. Ten activity offerings. I am. Okay. So there are our ten activity offerings that's created, and it created a code for each one. I can view that activity offering. I want to see the information about it. It's not going to have very much at this point in time, but I could look at it. What it'll also do is show you, in this case, this is the status of the activity. This is right now in the draft state. Of course, it will have its own state, like ready for scheduling and offered and that kind of thing later on. Tells me the type of activity it is, which format it lives in, um, and then there's other information that we'll continue to show. Right now, we're showing instructor and max enrollment. It's not really now, but it's the yet, but it will show there. In the future, we know as we get into areas of um, the schedule request aspect, we know that should be displayed here as well, which gets into the location, time, and things like that. So let's jump into. Before I get into editing, because it's going to send me all the way back to the home screen, let's just show copy. Um, so what I could do if I'd like, I could copy this particular seminar. So let's say, yeah, it's a good one. One minute. I'm going to go a little over. I think you say you're number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say you're number one much better. So in this case, I just copied, frankly, a, uh, a seminar that you can see. I could also, if I wanted to, delete an activity seminar. And it gives me a warning. We want this in a light box, but if I remember correctly, um, current KRAD can't do this in a light box right now, at least not for this round. I think the next version is allowing us to do that. That's like a firm activity. Okay. It took me back to the big subject code view. Let's get back into the course dog thing too. Okay. And let's jump in to edit real quick. So here in editor, will give you some information about the course offering, some information about the actual activity itself that we talked about before. Here I can set, I'm going to say this is going to be a 15, no, not 25 student seminar. I could add an instructor, which you kind of already saw before. I'll do it real quick. All right, that'll be the instructor. So if you have any waitlist information, um, on the CO, I didn't indicate any waitlist, so it's saying there's just no waitlist portable here. 
If I want to, I can put it a, a URL for information the faculty might want to put up there or the department. I can indicate whether this is going to be an evaluated activity or non-evaluated activity. And I can make it an honors. Oh, cool. so that has all been saved. And just to go full circle, do you believe me? We can see that information is not saved. You can see it in these other views. Actually, copy is more interesting. We can tell what's being done. Let's copy it. Great. Now I've got two. A little easier to see that I copied it than before. <laughs> and then the last, I think, quick thing to show is I showed delete before. You can also do mass delete. So if I want to select these three or all of them, I can select a bunch and hit delete and delete all of them at once. There's other actions that are forthcoming in that. Um, ability in terms of changing state and things like that of the offering, but um, that's not being delivered this room. Okay, I'm over. So let me stop <laughs> for any questions or thoughts or anything else that somebody wanted me to show or demonstrate. Kathy, did I miss anything poignant in the um, West Coast side? No, no, you covered it all very well. Thank you. It rushed a little. <laughs> All right, demo complete. Um, I want to uh, sort of with Kathy and, and Dan here um, to take an opportunity to to publicly thank the um, delivery teams for their work, um, which is ongoing, of course, but uh, on course offering. Um, and oh well, and Dan, of course, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry, thank you. Our other PO. <laughs> um, but the, um, the the teams have um, worked really well uh, in, in collaboration um, on developing this functionality, um, and I say um, excellent collaboration between themselves as they're amongst amongst the delivery teams themselves, and in collaboration with the, the core teams as well. Uh, Regis, you have a question slash comment. You, all right, I, you sketched me that you did. <laughs> yep, I'm here, sorry. It's just hard getting off mute. Um, the, the comment I had was, um, and, and Mike, if you can validate this, that the UX team is working on um, um, a, 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 st a set of style sheets which will change the look and feel of these pages because the look and feel that you're getting out of the box is what is really default out of the box with KRAD, right? Yeah, we, I mean, we expect some of the, um, the screen design to evolve um, as, we, as we sort of come to better understand what patterns we could we can identify um, for for how the user interface um, should work, um, and the um, the implementation of those kinds of changes will have to be kind of prioritized and scheduled um, for future development. No, I absolutely understand that, but I think there is the the simple matter of of updating the style sheets in here, which I am advised by the UX team that they're working on. Um, you know, just creating a new style sheet, which will automatically provide a better look and feel without any coding changes to the Java code. Sure. That, that was my comment, yeah. Okay. Yes, I think that's definitely still planned. Um, uh, there's a certain level of sort of polish that we all anticipate will come later. 